Sunday. Are you um? It, tell me this: Are you at all concerned that the Bucks have may have, like they may have gotten jobbed by the Pats here because the the Pats uh, traded a retired player and a seventh round pick <laughs> for a fourth round pick? At, at, are the Bucks at all worried about that fourth round pick? Is, I don't is this think so. It? Because that was an extra fourth round pick, and the books the Bucks are figuratively pushing all the chips into the middle right now. They are they are doing everything they can to try to win and win huge in 2020 if they are able to. There is nothing promised beyond really this season. How do you know what Brady has left? How do you know if Gronkowski can play a second year? All, I mean, all of that is a bonus if it does come back around 15, 18 months from now. So we'll, I mean, we'll see, but they, I mean, they have that mentality and that may continue guys. Uh, we morph this into tomorrow night in the draft. Are they going to be, uh, you know, buyers at this point and try to move up in the opening round of the draft, especially if the tackles start coming off the board and the bucks are sitting at 14, might they try to move up with this same mentality here? Uh, and one of the interesting pieces, I don't know if you want to talk about this now, maybe OJ Howard, the former Alabama tight end, and Gary, I know that's one of your guys, uh, the Alabama first-round pick from three years ago may may be part of a package deal to try to move up. How aggressive will the Bucks be with that mentality right now if we want to win and win big in 2020? Well, that's it's so that's an interesting topic to get into, and, and yeah, let's go ahead and dive into it. Um, you know, one thing that was brought up by multiple people was that's how you know that people don't have a lot of faith in O.J. Howard in the last year of his rookie deal is if he was worth anything, the Pats would have wanted him back in the trade, yeah. right? Pats need a t- tight end. They would rather have a fourth-round pick than O.J. Howard. I-, I think it's only fans that still think O.J. Howard has any value at all. That's it. They're the only people. Everybody in the NFL realizes we got three years of tape on this guy. We had a quarterback that had no problems getting playmakers the ball. He couldn't stop turning the ball over. And you can't say, oh, it's the offense, because two of those years was under Dirk Cutter, who just had Austin Hooper, one of the least athletic white guys in the NFL, have a career year and just got paid. So all of the excuses are out there for O.J. Howard, and he's never put up any meaningful numbers in any game outside of college in his life. I think the NFL. No, I don't go the way. Wait, wait, wait. I don't go that far. You're talking. You're talking about somebody that's been at field level for some of the games. OJ Howard like had like five 100 yard games his first year in the league. Had a couple of had a couple of games uh, where he caught multiple touchdown passes. Caught a 75 yard bomb in the uh, in the second game of the season two years ago against the Eagles, where he burned their their linebacker and their safety. It's not as if the guy is inept. As a player, I mean, there have been plenty what, of right, first so round explain, picks. Explain to me why the last two years he's been virtually useless and nobody wants him because he's been on the trading block for a long time. He didn't just get put up there a couple of I weeks think, ago. I think that the new coaching staff has questions about him and about the total, the total commitment to what they're trying to do and the two tight end thing. And so maybe he is expendable to them for that reason. But obviously, they didn't trade him, to your point, last year. They could have maybe traded him at the trading deadline and did not trade him. And so now you've got all this talk that maybe they will trade him, and then again, maybe they won't. I mean, there's a, on the flip side, there's a legitimate argument that Gronkowski's not going to play 16 games for you, that he may not be healthy for all of them. And he may, get, he may get hurt enough where he misses several because of an injury, and you can't have enough depth. He is... He is big and he is talented, and I don't know that it's the smartest thing to just write him off in, on any team in any situation. There are far more examples of guys who have done nothing, and, and, and O.J. is not a guy who's done nothing. Uh, you know, I remember uh, field level a game against the New York Giants where he burned them on, a, on another bomb on a Jameis bootleg for about a 70-yard touchdown uh, in the fourth quarter of a Giants game as well. The guy can get deep and can make some plays. So uh, we shall see. We we shall see uh, if I mean, the Bucks hang on to him few, or if another team You're pulling a few big plays, but he's been in the league for three years. If if you don't have a few big plays and a few big games in three years, I can't explain this. I just don't uh, – overall, as his career, I, I've just heard too many people make too many excuses. They said that, you know, his, his – his, the last year that the the coaching staff didn't like him and and don't run through the tight ends which Bruce Arians does not run through the tight ends it's fine but how do you explain Dirk Cotter being his coach for two of those years 
and Dirk Cutter's first year as an OC back in Atlanta, and then his previous years as an OC has always gotten the ball to the tight end. I, I just I, I just see too many people making too many mistakes. The guy that this reminds me of on a on a bigger level than him is Sammy Watkins. Everybody tried to make Sammy Watkins a thing, and it was always his quarterback, his coach, his offensive, yada, yada, yada. And now he's the number two or number three option on a team, and he does just fine. But that's not why you drafted Sammy Watkins. But people just kept making excuses for why he wasn't elite, why he didn't turn into this great player. People talked about the big three before Grant got there, and they kept throwing OJ's name out there for Tom Brady. And I thought, I, I just that's, don't get it. Cameron Brady's yeah. twice the man he is when it comes to looking at the production. Is he as athletic? No. It, but for some reason, he produces, outproduces him head and shoulders. Yeah. Michael jumped in on Twitch, by the way. Uh, he said fans and Gary, LOL. Uh, well, Alabama fans and Tampa fans. Those yeah. are the two fans. They're the only fans. <laughs> well, that's what I said. I said I'm considered Alabama a fan. fans and Tampa fans are married to this guy. At some point in time, I, Gary, you you know this is my philosophy about everything in life, okay? It's not just sports. It's about relationships. It's about jobs. It's about everything. It, the, my grandfather taught me one thing when I was a child. I was four to five years old when he told me this. I remember it like it was yesterday. As soon as you have a losing hand, fold it. Yes. Uh, that's that's a good point. Uh, Michael also said, "Fan or Homer, I don't see you asking for the Steelers to get him. Uh, the Steelers are set up at tight end. Like uh, we're the Steelers are fine. They are? That's I I think so. <laughs> they are. <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> maybe not. I don't know. I, uh, look, here's the deal. I want him to go somewhere where he can play. Uh, and I think he can play in Tampa uh, because I do think that TJ is right about the fact that uh, I don't know that Gronk is going to play 16 games and then and then play through the playoffs." Okay. Well, he hadn't done it in years. Games. So and if he does, he'll be very. He'll be on a snap count. Yeah, it's, I, I just I don't see that happening. And we, uh, I understand fully where uh, Chris stands. And so, Chris, you're willing to say after Thursday night, if the Bucks trade him somewhere for something in return, that obviously somebody else thinks he can play in the NFL. Well, it depends on what if they get. I mean, if they if they get a third or a fourth round pick for him, I don't think that team thinks he can play. I just think that team was moving out of out of whatever position they were in. I mean. It, it, yeah, it depends Nobody on what the deal on is. Thursday is going to trade a first round pick for OJ Howard. I, Probably I would not. A no, substantial amount of money on that. Yeah, uh, let's. TJ. We will see. And one and one other point, one other larger point. This year will be no exception. About three quarters of the names that you hear on Thursday night aren't going to make much of an impact on your team. That's it's right. usually about ten. Yep, it's about 10 to maybe 15 at the most a lot of years, more than likely closer yeah. to 10, that really make an impact. And about 20 of the guys that you're going to hear, that that's going to be the big moment for them, is walking up, not this case, but walking up on the stage typically with Goodell, have the jersey, have the hat, the whole bit. And then, I mean, you could go down the laundry list of even recent drafts of, of three years ago, four years ago, where are these guys? And, and so that's a lot of the NFL, but we, we uh, we'll see so many players because they get drafted on in the first round are going to be just lights out monster studs. And, and they're you, not, you, you just can't chalk all these guys up to being sure things. No, you got that right. Here's the biggest thing that I was taught many years ago. And it's not that profound, but it, it bears repeating and, and reinforcing when you see guys in college, a lot of times they are physically more talented and better than who they're going against, especially on a regular basis. In the NFL, it's even. Or a lot of the guys you're going against are better than you, more experienced than you, and more talented than you are. <laughs> and so that's when, the, that's when you get exposed. So you yep. get away with, I was bigger, I was faster, I was better than most of the teams I was going against in college because it's college. But in the NFL, the elite of the elite, you are not going to get away with simply being bigger or being faster. You're going to have to get by because you are as talented, more talented, work harder, improve chemistry with those around you, those kind of things, or else you won't. It's very rare that anybody just gets by on uh, on talent alone or one aspect of their game alone, uh, it's it's very rare. Everybody can play. They they have found players 
from all all different schools, all different levels who can all play, who are all big, who are all fast, who can all run. And you better be equal to them and you better 